All right, in this video, let's talk about client server, client, client server architecture. This is the architecture of about everything in the real world. So before we can understand relational databases and machine learning and all the other stuff, we need to go to the very basics. We need to go back to the drawing board to understand this idea of client server architecture. All right, so here we have a laptop. Here's a laptop. Here is the internet, we'll just call it I, and here are some servers. Some servers. All right, so you're sitting at your laptop. Most of us don't sit on our laptop and work at applications that are on the laptop. We connect to the internet. Well, what is the internet? What is this nebulous cloud? Well, really it, what it is, is servers. Lots and lots of servers. And there are different kinds of servers. There are database. There are database servers. There are web servers. If you're connecting to the internet, you're connecting to a web server. And there are app servers. And there are other kinds too. These are the three main kind. Now, we can keep breaking this down further. There are different types of database vendors, right? There's SQL Server. I didn't have a lot of room here. There are, let me go up this way then. There's MySQL. There's Oracle. All right. And guess what? So there are different types of databases. So if we come down here, let's draw this. So we have two major kinds of databases. All right. Two, two majors. And we have number one, relational. And then number two, we have a data warehouse, a data warehouse. And these have different functions. This is for fast transactions. This is for online stores. You want your data to be processed quickly. This is for reporting. And they're architected a little differently, but they are both databases. They're two major kinds of databases, right? So we have this idea of client server. We have a laptop connecting to the internet, which is really just a bunch of servers. Here we have different kinds of database servers, Oracle, MySQL. Oracle is the company. Uh, SQL Server is Microsoft, MSFT. There's their ticker. MySQL is also owned or maintained or whatever you want to call it. It's actually owned by Oracle. All right, so we've got these servers that are on the internet. So what's on these servers? Well, these servers have an OS, and that stands for operating system. Well, what kind? Well, it depends on the different flavors. There are two main flavors in the real world. There are Windows servers. And guess what? This is Microsoft, MSFT. And there are Linux or Unix or some flavor of that. And Linux is open source. Open source, All right? Basically, you can download it and use it for free. Now, there is one part we're missing here in this drawing. And we're missing this idea of the network. So the network here is the cabling, cabling. It is the comms, and it, it is all the other stuff that connects us together. All right, that's pretty straightforward. So this is client-server architecture. So when someone asks you about client-server architecture, this is what they're talking about. You've got your laptop, you're connecting to the internet, or you're connecting directly to one of these. You can go from here to here. You don't have to go over the internet. I can take my laptop and connect directly to a database server. We can skip the internet, uh, however most don't. All right, so you're going to need to understand this concept of client-server before you can really understand servers and operating systems and all this other fun stuff. All right, for those of you who don't know, I have a platform called Logic Bot, and it really was started to teach machine learning However, machine learning is so hard to get into, that's an L, machine learning, that it's morphed into a 
platform for machine learning for those who are in a data role and then for the data analyst role. The truth is, it doesn't matter what data role. It could be the data analyst, it could be the machine learning engineer, both of these are data roles, or it could be the DE, the data engineer. You're going to have to know SQL. There's no way around it. It is the language of data. And that's that. So I have two really good courses on my platform for that. This is one for, this is SQL Server, SQL Server. And it is one of the most prevalent in the real world. And this is a, we just talked about that, relational database. This one over here, you get a little machine learning in it, but it's still a lot of this tool, BigQuery, which is Google, which is on Google's platform, which is on their cloud, and it is a data warehouse. And what it is is really one big table, one big table that you store data in and that you can report against, and it's awesome. So I would recommend that you sign up, take these courses, and study for them, learn. What's the difference between relational databases and data warehouses? Um, maybe even take this. I think I'm not sure if there is an exam specific to BigQuery. I'm not sure. I haven't looked lately. Uh, but I know there is one for the data engineer. And there are a lot of BigQuery questions on the data engineer exam. The certification, not the certificate of completion, which is worthless. All right. I won't drone on. Logibot. Check it out. 